If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I think Sunsoft's 8-bit offerings are the bomb. While their earlier stuff like Blaster Master and Batman are classics in their own right, their NES stuff entering the 90s was unbelievably good. These games like Batman Return of the Joker, Gremlins 2 and Journey of Silius really push the systems to its limits. I've delved into a couple of titles from this era before in some much older videos, but Trip World's new ground for me, so let's dive right in. A Game Boy release, the story of this game goes that a shadowed stranger visits the home of the Flower of Peace in the mountains, guarded by an old furry thing. It turns out that old guy was the grandpa of the character you play as, Yakapu, and as Yakapu we have to go and bring back the Flower of Peace because otherwise, apparently the other beings of this world go mad? This is kind of undermined to me by the fact most enemies don't hurt you upon contact, and in fact the vast majority of them will either ignore you or at most playfully bump you around in a way that's more irritating than outright malevolent. For creatures that have supposedly gone insane, it's actually pretty cute. Of course, if you attack them first, some of them will become aggressive, but can you really blame them at this point, you violent psychopath? The only enemies it's truly mandatory to fight are the bosses, who have the same kind of AI that made gimmicks so challenging because they react to your moves and attack when you're open, and you have to do the same to them with a very, very puny kick. Um, oh, graphically, this game is a jewel on the Game Boy's crown. From this very first cutscene, you can see that despite the monochrome visuals, the character designs are adorably appealing and the level art itself maintains a depth, a sort of organic feel that combined with the multiple layers of background and the lush tile sets make Trip World a very engrossing game to look at. Similar to Gimmick before it, this title has a penchant for showing off big, impressive, for the time, landmarks for a single screen before they never show up again, lending them a certain memorability and also, much like Gimmick, there's a sense of weight and life to the environments and characters as they merrily cavort their way around the levels around you, which is also kind of a problem by the fact you can fly over every... Um, hey, how about the music, huh? <laughs> um, the music's quite nice, there's nothing particularly special in the sound design, though, aside from the first levels theme having a segment in it that totally rips off Tragedy by the Bee Gees. You know the game plays farts, you can't avoid it forever. Can't avoid it forever. Can't avoid it forever. Okay, fine. Let's talk about the gameplay, I've avoided it long enough. Yakapu ambles through the levels at a snail's pace, and his main method of offense is this kick, which has an absolutely pathetic range. You can switch through various gimmicky eh, forms by picking up certain objects in the stages, but these are only ever temporary, and none of them can be taken into boss fights, making them utterly pointless since it's often more utilitarian to walk past enemies than it is to fight them. Aside from those, you can switch between three basic forms by holding up and down on the D-pad and pressing the B button, upward for a helicopter that completely ruins any of the game's platforming, and downward for an extremely situational fish. These only get the chance to be remotely useful a couple of times in the game, and some of the rules about where you can and can't fly are either way too lax or way too strict, depending on the stage. Not that you would even need it half the time, the platforming presented by the level designs is as bland as it comes, and I never felt like I was being pushed with any difficult to maneuver sections, or made to think about how I approached a part. In fact, a majority of the game seemed like walking around, jumping over a couple of enemies, and then a boss fight where the odds are stacked so high against you because your method of defense is so rubbish. Overall, Trip World is a total snooze fest, and if it weren't such a rare and expensive game, I'm pretty sure nobody would even care about it. Hell, I feel bad about comparing it to Mr. Gimmick, an 8-bit game so aesthetically and functionally astounding that it's arguably worth that £300 plus used price tag, because outside of a few superficial similarities, the games are nothing alike. Gimmick's sight, sound and polish will last you a lifetime, but this? This'll last you an hour. 
An hour and a half if I'm feeling particularly generous and you're feeling particularly on the slow side. Trip World isn't a good game, due to the fact that in the end there's very little game to speak of. Aside from a few lukewarm boss encounters and a few nifty landmarks, this could arguably be classed as one of the first walking simulators. There's often little to no obstacles to impede your progress, most enemies are incapable of hurting you unless you attack them first, and any platforming required is unchallenging and basic. And you could argue the Kirby series isn't difficult, but there's at least some illusion of tension, while this game just doesn't have it. It's more like a tech deck. I wanted to like Trip World. I really did. But it was a major letdown for a game with so much buzz behind it. I can't say I'd recommend this one. Even the £10 I paid for a reproduction cartridge was too much. And everything you've seen in this video is everything the game has to offer. 